friends and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In my last tutorial, I had made a full app that took a picture using camera and uploaded this picture to a folder in Google Drive. Today, I will show you how to make our code so generic that we are effectively able to upload any type of file to Google Drive be it text, audio, video or image. This tutorial assumes that you have completed the picture uploading app as we wrote some essential script in it and we also made a public folder in Google Drive. Link for the previous tutorial is in the video description. So let's begin. Open up your previous upload to G Drive project in MIT App Inventor and go to the block section. So this is our previous code. And this script URL and folder ID, this is the Google Drive's folder ID, public folder and the script URL is for the script that we wrote for this app. First of all, we are going to make a procedure for uploading files that takes in two inputs. So go to procedures and choose this first one, the one that doesn't return a result and let's name it to upload file and click on the cog wheel and drag two inputs inside it. And let's rename these two inputs to file ext, that is file extension, what type of file it is, and file path. This will be the absolute path of the file where it is located in your device. Now, let's look at this code, this upload pick button code that we wrote for uploading an image, a camera image to the Google Drive. So let's look at this part. Remember we were doing a special thing here that the part that we got from the camera, it had this extra bit in the beginning of it and we were replacing it by an empty text block. So how about we take it from here, this thing, and put it in our camera code, okay? So, Where's the camera code from where we were actually getting the picture? This one. So how about we give it the correct path from the very beginning, okay? So if I put it here and I replace it by get image. So whatever the path is returned by after picture event, we fix it in the very beginning by removing file colon slash slash from it and we give the correct path to image to upload, okay? And we can then give this correct absolute path of the image directly to our, this file to string direct procedure that converts it to base64, okay? The extension that we were using. So this is more or less generic now, this code. So let me look at it completely. So we are setting the file name, setting the media type, then setting the URL and then we are posting the text. So how about we pick this all up and put it inside a new custom procedure for uploading the file, okay? And let's remove the image specific elements from it. This file type, file extension and this part, the file part. Let me replace it by this. Get file extension and the file path will come here. Okay, so our procedure requires two inputs. The file extension, similar to this, and the file path, similar to this, okay? But now what about our upload picture button code? So just take this code that we removed, the image specific code, and here call the procedure upload file and pass it exactly the same things, okay? So now this is calling our procedure and providing it the image related bit because this is the upload pick button code and the path of the image file. Okay, so this is done. And now we can use this upload file procedure to upload any file as long as we know its file path. So let's add some more components to our app for testing it. So let's go to the designer 
So to test our procedure, let's add some more components to our screen for uploading text and sound files. From layout, drag and drop another horizontal arrangement below this arrangement. For this new horizontal arrangement, make a line horizontal center, a line vertical center. The height should be 13% and the width should be fill parent. Okay, now this is for our text file uploading section. So from user interface, drag and drop a text box and also put two buttons next to this text box. Rename the first button to say file button and change the text on it to save and this button, this one rename it to upload file button and change the text on it to upload file. Okay and now select this horizontal arrangement and duplicate it by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V on the keyboard for Windows or Command C, Command V for Mac OS. Now this is for a recording bit so we don't need the text box so delete it and change this button, rename it to Start REC button and change the text on it to Start REC which means Start recording and we will use the same button for stopping the recording and uploading it too. You can have two different buttons for this task. Rename it to stop REC and upload button and change the text on it to stop and upload sound. Okay. And we need some other components for making our text file and making a sound recording. So from storage, drag and drop a file component and from media, drag and drop a sound recorder. Okay, so this done, now let's go back to our block section. First we need an, another global variable for our text file part. So I can duplicate this file name and rename it to text file path. Okay. And what happens when the save file button is pressed, what we're going to do is we're going to take whatever is inside text box provided by the user and save it as a text file. So if I click on file, I have this procedure called save file. So for text, it is our text box text. So I can get it from here. And the file name. Now, the file name is a text block in which we can provide the file name. But make sure that you start it with a forward slash, otherwise, it will be saved in the private storage of the app. We will not be able to get the path for it, which we need for uploading it to Google Drive. So, make sure that you start with the forward slash so that it is stored in the app specific directory, okay? And let's give it a name like testing file dot txt. This will not be the name of the file name that will be stored in Google Drive because remember we construct it using the clock's current timestamp, okay? So this is just the name of the file in our device, okay? And make sure that you give .txt at the end of it, okay? Whatever file name you're giving and always start it with forward slash. This is important. This save file procedure, when it is successfully run, it will trigger the files after file saved event. And this will give us a file name, which is unfortunately the same as this file name, okay? We are not getting the absolute path from this file name. So how can we get the absolute path, okay? So first of all, let's get the setter for it. And we need to fill up this text file path with the absolute path of this file. So how to get that? Now, in our excellent extension, this one, that we downloaded 
for uploading to Google Drive by converting to Base64 is a procedure that gives us the path of the app specific directory. If we join it with this file name, this file name, we can get the absolute path of the text file. Okay. Go to text and get the join block. And the first slot is the app specific directories path. And the second slot will contain the file name. Okay. And now this upload file button is pretty similar to our upload picture code that we just call the procedure, our custom procedure upload file. And in the file extension, I can duplicate this block. And here, this part is not that important. I can write whatever I want to add to my timestamp. So let me just add txt here too. But this is the important part that I give the correct extension, which is dot txt. Okay, and the file path is our text file path. So I can hover over it and get the get for it, which we set correctly after the file was saved. Okay, and this is done for the text file bit. And when the start recording button is clicked, what happens? We should tell the sound recorder to start recording by calling its start procedure. And when the stop recording and upload button is clicked, we should tell the sound recorder to stop recording. But where is the upload bit? This procedure will trigger an event for sound recorder when sound recorder dot after sound recorded. And fortunately, this sound is the absolute path of our sound file so we can simply call this upload file procedure and change it accordingly and this will be now underscore audio dot now this is not txt this is very important this is 3gp okay and this not the global text file path anymore it is the path of the sound which is returned by this event after sound recorded and we don't need to make any changes in it because it is the absolute path. Okay. So now we have a custom procedure using which we can upload any file to Google Drive if we know its absolute file path. So let's have a look at the demo of a completed app for testing the uploading of different types of files to Google Drive. Roses are red. Roses are red. So I hope you liked this tutorial. If you like my classes, consider supporting me by buying me a cup of coffee. The link is in the video description. Also, please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any of the great projects that I've planned for you. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and goodbye.